The Symbiote is the fun gameplay update that people were looking for in Spider-Man 2. Entire combat systems were built around it, and I'm certain the promise of Symbiote gameplay boosted sales quite a bit. Personally, I'm pretty happy with Spider-Man 2. There are some story decisions, particularly toward the end, that I have nitpicks with, but overall, I had a really fun time with the game. However, there is one thing that's stuck in my craw. One tiny detail that I can't get over, which is emblematic of a larger problem. After everything that Peter went through in this story, does he just have a symbiote forever? Insomniac used the black suit for the same reason that all Spider-Man media eventually come back around to it. It's fun. It's a total departure for the character, and that's the whole point. But that creates a unique problem for a game developer, far more so than for a comic book publisher or movie studio, because they need to balance a strong narrative with satisfying gameplay. So we come to a complete disconnect between the game wanting to be fun, while that fun goes against everything the story is trying to drive home. The Anti-Venom suit is the personification of a game being pulled in opposite directions, a result of the game's struggle to live up to its theme of balance. And that's what I want to talk about today. How Insomniac basically pulled a Drake and Josh. They built a sweet treehouse, but trapped themselves inside. The entire narrative of the game is built around Peter losing himself to the power of the black suit and the aftermath. If you take Peter's struggle out of this game, you have one cool Sandman fight and Miles Morales 1.5. Everything comes to a head when Peter nearly kills Kraven, but is pulled from the brink by the ones he loves, refusing to let himself be seduced by the ease of anger and power. This entire sequence, the action that led up to it and its immediate aftermath, are so powerful and emotionally resonant for all the major characters that I understand why Insomniac chose to tell this tale. Then, three missions later, Peter gets a new magic symbiote as a result of a friendship vision quest from this rejected 90s action comedy duo, and he's all good now. Full symbiote, no downsides. Actually, this one's even better than the old one, cause all the other symbiotes are weak to it. But. It never comes up in the story. There is no resolution with Anti-Venom. Even when Peter is going to take a break from being Spider-Man, it's never mentioned that he's going to separate himself from the symbiote. He seemingly has it forever now. Isn't that so weird? Putting aside the narrative disconnect caused by Anti-Venom, I get why the game went this route. The new combat ability system is a fantastic addition to the game. While it's not the most incredible thing I've ever seen, I think the abilities are mostly fun, and I definitely took advantage of this feature. The problem is that one whole branch of abilities is encouraged by the gameplay, but discouraged by the protagonist's character arc. Listen, I'm just a dude guy who's chill as all hell. I like playing with the symbiote. After Peter lost it, I was bummed that I was stuck with arm powers and worried that I wasted all my skill points in a branch that would no longer be available. When I realized I was able to goo it up again, I was happy. I 100% get why the developers gave us nasty little gamers this goop back, because they completely revamped their combat system to make it dependent on slime. But the addition of one fairly simple combat mechanic inadvertently resulted in a three-way wreck. This mechanic meant that the implied increase in power from the black suit was nerfed to keep all abilities relatively equal. It also necessitated the return of symbiote powers after their narrative departure, and that necessity undercut the story through a forced and sloppy justification for new symbiote powers. Let's focus on the nerfing of the black suit for a minute. Of the three issues I just mentioned, this is the one that bothers me the least, although it is a little disappointing. Because each Spider-Man needed to have the same combat system for some reason, that meant that their ability sets needed to be somewhat equivalent. So both Miles and Peter in their base forms are technically on par with a supposedly jacked up black suit Peter, undercutting the power fantasy of the glorified rage boost that is the symbiote. This is a problem because it cuts both ways. Since the other abilities are about equal to the symbiote, 
that means that Peter actually needs the symbiote from a gameplay perspective. While I appreciated Insomniac trying to innovate and keep things fresh by adding these abilities into combat, it's unfortunate that Peter requires the added symbiote moveset just to keep up with Miles. While Peter and Miles technically start off with the same number of special abilities, the arms just don't have the same oomph as any of Miles' powers or alien rage goo. But it didn't have to be that way. There are plenty of gadgets and suit abilities from the first game that could have been reincorporated into this one for Peter's abilities. Hell, even some advanced web techniques would have felt more personalized and stylish. This is the big spider arm attack Peter uses. I'm sorry, but it looks lame as hell. Sure, the arms can strike a cool pose every now and then, but compare the arms to the black suit, or anything that Miles can do, and it's clear why the developers leaned so heavily on using the symbiote as just another ability set. On the other hand, Miles was built perfectly for this system. He's got a great balance between his basic bioelectricity powers used in his spin-off and his new, even more bombastic and cinematic Black Lightning ripoff powers. They're both badass, and there are no negative implications to taking advantage of these abilities, so why wouldn't we want to use them? The game actively encourages this attitude, and his powers are even framed as a mystery to be unraveled, even though there's really no payoff. And not once is there a hint that these powers could be a danger to Miles or the ones around him. Whenever he's in a jam, a brand new power just pops up out of nowhere, usually accompanied by some orchestral horn of awesomeness. His powers are just fun to play with and cool. The idea of themed abilities is cool. Peter's symbiote powers are also cool, but I feel like Insomniac backed themselves into a corner. Implementing the black suit as a standard ability set to make up for these limp dick arms and how damn cool they managed to make Miles forced a severe undercutting of the implied power of the symbiote, which is what makes it so appealing to begin with. And that brings me to the inevitable return of symbiote powers. It's obvious that the story of this game is very anti-symbiote. Not a single person who wears one is better off in the long run. By the time the anti-venom suit shows up, the idea of a symbiote Peter combo skeeves me out. I was told it should upset me, and it does. The powers of the symbiote are for bad boy street dancing Peter, not for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. We've seen it corrupt Peter's mind and harm his relationships. Ultimately, the symbiote is supposed to be a fun phase, but one that was never meant to last forever. Oh, wait, boss, you're telling me Peter needs to match Miles' new static powers? Ah, uh, yeah, fuck it. Give him the symbiote back. Who really cares about the last few hours of story dedicated to removing it from Peter? We'll just say he got a new, good symbiote that has all the pros and none of the cons. But sir, we've already written the ending of the game. Surely we'd have to rewrite some scenes to address that Peter is also wearing a symbiote in his climactic fight against Venom. No, no, don't worry about that. We'll just have him glow a couple times, and that'll be good enough. I think that the anti-venom compromise between narrative and gameplay is bizarre. Now, I completely understand that there is technically no issue with Peter using anti-venom. It's got all of Mr. Negative's beams, so that means no downsides at all, I guess. But that justification feels so toothless. It had to be an edict given to the writing team to benefit gameplay expectations rather than an organic conclusion the writers came to in service of the story. And honestly, the same can be said about Peter's other set of abilities too. All of Peter's abilities cause him more narrative harm than good. Exhibit B. Peter uses Doc Ock's tech, the thing that helped drive his beloved mentor mad and that he cursed himself for helping to create at the end of the first game. Now. It's not a big deal. They're helpful with no downsides at all. Sound familiar? Ultimately, the anti-venom suit shows up way too soon for it to be a welcome change from the re-established status quo. By the time it arrives, I want to play as regular Spider-Man. But the suit powers are just too fun and useful. And you don't even get an option to change Peter's ultimate to anything else. It's just symbiote 
or nothing at all. Finally, let's discuss the origin of the anti-venom suit, because I don't think there's a single thing about it that works in the story. It is a completely unearned power-up for Peter that undercuts his entire journey thus far and his journey going forward. I think Mr. Negative's story with Miles in this game was mature and interesting, but the fact that he shows up out of the blue to supercharge some remaining symbiote particles inside of Peter just felt so forced. I understand that this is similar to the comic book origin of Anti-Venom, so I don't really blame Insomniac for going for it, but this whole plot point comes off as insincere because as it stands, the Anti-Venom suit is the culmination of two completely disconnected story threads being smushed together. Miles and Martin Lee finally reconcile. It just so happens to take place inside Peter's soul or whatever, and provides an unconscious Peter with the perfect gift when he wakes up. Peter says thanks, and then Lee walks off, because nothing about this game's story is about these two. So this interaction comes off as out of place and a little awkward. Although, I actually think the story of the soul journey could have been massaged to work for all three characters if the goal wasn't to introduce Anti-Venom as quickly as possible. Imagine Miles and Lee on this journey, but they are joined by a part of Peter's consciousness, at least occasionally. He doesn't have to be there the whole time. Rather than Lee just knowing Peter's secret identity for some reason, Lee actually learns Spider-Man is Peter Parker for the first time. Everything with Lee and Miles remains the same, but Lee also sees the price of his actions, not just on Miles, but on Peter too. It would have had much more of an emotional impact on both Spider-Men, and would have had Peter at least be somewhat proactive in gaining his new symbiote abilities. But alas, he just wakes up from a coma, beefed up out of his mind. It's like Luke Skywalker overcoming the seduction of the dark side, then, right before the final battle, and through no action of his own, he gets all the advantages of the dark side without any of the consequences. I just wish that Peter had somehow earned these powers, or if they had any drawbacks at all. Like if using the anti-venom abilities didn't corrupt him, but required some of his health then I would have been much more accepting of its inclusion. While I actually like the idea of Anti-Venom, how it was implemented in the story made me wish it had never been included in the first place. Personally, I think the symbiote abilities should have just been available in the post-game for side missions and free roam. That would have been perfect for me, but since that's not the case, the continued existence of Anti-Venom raises the question does Peter just have this symbiote forever? There are no drawbacks, he'd be a fool to give up the suit and lose these abilities. But, after this whole experience, with even MJ getting gooed up and Harry being comatose, that just doesn't sit right with me. So, that's my one major nitpick with this game. No more symbiotes, please. Except, carnage. Fingers crossed in the Carnage DLC, both the Anti-Venom and Carnage symbiotes are destroyed for good. If that's the case, I take back 50% of this video.